I'm Jill Bearup, this is History of Fan Fiction Part 7, and today we are both going to cross over with stuff you like and, you know, spread the love. That sounds kind of dodgy. Mostly, though, we're going to attempt to answer the question, how does promotion of your fic even work in a gift economy? <laughs> So in part two we discussed the history of copyright and how it relates to fanfiction. And honestly, legal concerns are really important to the way that fanfic culture has shaped itself over the last hundred years or so. Younger fans may laugh at the disclaimers that one can still see up on fanfiction.net, but they have been talismans warding off the wrath of the lawyers for longer than you've been alive, kid, so show some respect. And as we discussed in part five, you really don't want to get the lawyers involved because fanfic authors generally don't have loads of money to throw around. But past the point where you have internet access and some degree of free time. How much money you have doesn't actually matter in fanfiction, because fanfic is a gift economy. A gift economy or gift culture is where valuables are not traded or sold, but rather given without explicit agreement for reward. In contrast to a barter economy or a market economy where goods and services are primarily exchanged for value received. Thanks, Wikipedia. Given that you can't sell anyone your fanfiction for money, a market economy is right out. I mean, there's a name for people who end up selling their fanfiction. Kevin J. Anderson. There is such a thing as barter in the fanfiction economy, as it were, with stuff like the Yule Fic Exchange, where you write a fic for someone and someone writes a fic for you. But things like fic exchanges are much, much less common than just writing something that you fancy writing and hoping that other people will like it. In the fanfiction gift economy, you give your gift of fic to the world and you are repaid with likes, favourites, kudos, nice comments, shares on social media. Maybe someone will make some art related to your fanfic for you. Or someone might write fanfic based on your fanfic. And this is how fanon grows. That is to say, the commonly shared set of assumptions on how things work in canon which doesn't actually have any textual evidence. For example, in Avengers fanon, Thor loves Pop-Tarts. But the idea behind a gift economy is freely ye have received, now freely give. The main thing we're talking about today, though, is not AO3 kudos or those really long comments that people sometimes leave where they quote their favourite bits, though authors love those, so I very much encourage you to do that. But wrecking, or rex, which is to say, recommendations. <laughs> So you've written a fanfic. Congratulations! There is a group of people in the world who would really love your fanfic. How big that group is depends on the size of your fandom. The potential pool for Sherlock fic is much higher than, say, Thunderbirds are go. Topic, the characters, see Kylo Ren versus Jocasta Nu. And the quality of your writing, among other things. Like, have you included any of those tropes which everyone says are so cliche, but then if you include their favourite ship, they're like, sign me up for that cliche. Like, fake marriage or coffee shop alternate universe or whatever. Regardless, there is this group of people and they would love your fic, but how do they find it? Well, there's always the search function on fanfiction sites, but the savvy searcher will tend to rate those by comments or likes or favourites or kudos or whatever. There's tag searching and character searching and just plain old searching, but if your fic isn't on one of the big sites then you might just be out of luck. Thankfully, there is also wrecking. Because it is a truth universally acknowledged that people who like writing fanfiction tend to love reading fanfiction and they want to share all of their favourite things with you so that you can read them and love them and gush about them together. So you will quite often find blog posts where people recommend their favourite fics in various genres. Leading to, one hopes the fic getting more likes or kudos or comments or whatever, which moves it higher in search rankings, which means it gets more views and likes and kudos and whatever, and so it's a virtuous circle. So in that vein we are going to go back to the very essence of stuff you like, even if this is technically a history of fanfiction episode, and I'm going to give you a short list of fic that I really, really love. So. Avatar The Last Airbender, Eight Principles of Yong, in which right after the Agni Kai, Zuko saves the world with fancy firebending calligraphy. It's so optimistic it makes my heart hurt, and it's funny. Zuko has no illusions that he's cutting an inspiring figure of leadership right now, but he's lucid and upright, which is more than can be said of the competition. Chronicles of Narnia, get yourself over to AO3 and Arth Stewart and just wallow in the amazingness of the Pevensey's doing their thing in World War II England and France. Spoilers. It's not finished, but it is quite a long series, so you can just, like, stop at the end of the last completed book if that sort of thing bothers you. 
Start with the stone griffin. NCIS. I love basically everything by Sequitur on fanfiction.net. I guess not the Victoriana stuff so much, but still. But my rec for today definitely goes to Scheherazade's day job. It's set during the period where Gibbs is naffed off to Mexico and Tony is in charge of the team and there's a hostage situation and it's just amazing. What I'm saying is any plan that turns on the fulcrum of Tony not annoying someone is a pretty flawed plan. It's perfect and beautiful, you guys. Beautiful and perfect. Portal 2, I'm going to be entirely predictable because the quintessential Portal 2 fanfic is Blue Sky by Waffles. In which Wheatley becomes a real boy, sort of, and I spent the entire time wondering if Unicron was an intentional misspelling of Unicorn or if it was just like autocorrect. Darn you autocorrect. I think it was intentional. I think Wheatley's just a bit dim. Also it's Chell Wheatley, and no, I was not on board either when I was told that, but trust me and give it a go. Thunderbirds Are Go, my personal favourite, is the entirety of the Heavenward series by Prelude in Z. Z? Z? Prelude in last letter of the alphabet. It's not a fanfic, it's a freaking eight book series that tops 300,000 words. But the first story is only like 21,000 words, so you can ease in gently if you like. If you like Thunderbirds, especially the new one, especially Eos, then you should try it because it's heartbreaking and beautiful and ugh. I hate talented people. Hate them. Star Wars! Because of course. I'm a big fan of Limelight and the Not Quite Love Letters on fanfiction.net, but sadly it was never finished, which I know some people don't like, so. Limelight, however, is the reason that I am a Wes Johnson Mon Mothma shipper, yeah, there's a rare pair for you, but it's like crack to me and I make no apologies. So my actual rec if you like completed stuff is Simple Rebellion Physics, an interactive guidebook by Phil Stone on AO3, where we learn how Princess Leia's hair is vital to rebellion morale. Vital, ma'am. Side note, I have been reading some of the novels formerly known as the Expanded Universe and now known as Legends and oh man, I forgot how amazing some of them are. In both the this is really good sense and the this is so bad, it's just awesome sense. That courtship of Princess Leia, you guys. Dang. Last but not least, Zombies Run and the somewhat lengthily titled New Inheritors of Earth You Overestimate Your Worth. Which is, I have to admit, an absolutely beautiful title but bears no resemblance to the content of the fic at all, which is basically D&D romance related shenanigans. And now it's your turn but you need to listen very carefully to my instructions or your comment may get spammed. Like it's okay if you want to just put a link in your comment but bear in mind it will go straight to the spam section and I'm moving house right now. I know you're so surprised. So my internet access is a touch spotty right now and it may take me a couple of days to fish it out. If not you can give us the fandom, the title, the author, where we can find it and maybe your favourite quote or a bit about what's in there. So for example, my recommendation is Simple Rebellion Physics, an interactive guidebook by Phil the Stone on AO3, in which Wes Jansen narrowly avoids getting court-martialed and Mon Mothma has explained to her why Princess Leia's updos are vital to the future of the rebellion. Thank you for watching, thank you as always to my patrons who are wonderful, wreck your favourite fanfic in the comments and I'll see you next time.